Hi folks, this is Shefik. Today we are going to focus on failure public key crypto system and add homomorphic features with respect to the addition and multiplication. But before we begin, please like the video, do not forget to subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon to stay up to date with the latest videos. Also, your comments are more than welcome. Thank you for your all support in advance. Similar to RSA crypto system, we are expected to choose two large prime numbers, but in this experiment i'm going to pick p as 13 and q as 17. the first condition as p should not be equal to the q thereafter we should check the primes of those numbers i'm going to create a function named this prime and it's going to get a input x thereafter i'm going to build a for loop for i in the range from 2 to x minus 1 thereafter i'm going to check x can be divisible by i without remainder if this condition is satisfied thereafter this is not going to be a prime number if this for loop run and no response values returned thereafter this is a prime number and i can return true let's move this to upper cell and check the primes of those p and q numbers then we are going to find the modulus n this is going to be p times q similar to rsa crypto system and we are going to find a quotient function of n which is shortly p this is going to be p minus 1 times q minus 1 please remember that quotient function of n counts the positive integer numbers from 2 to n minus 1 that co prime to n we can count those numbers one by one but this formula counts as much faster because the time complexity of this operation is O1. On the other hand, counting numbers one by one has O n time complexity. Paler crypto system requires a function L. I'm going to define it as Lx and its input is going to be x and its output is going to be x minus 1 over n output of function l must be integer that's why i'm going to check its result is integer i can check it like that y minus integer of y must be equal to zero if this condition is satisfied thereafter i'm able to return the value as integer value of y then similar to lgml crypto system we are going to work on a generator g and this is going to be one plus n and we are going to use a lambda argument and it's going to be quotient function of n itself finally mu is going to be the multiplicative inverse of quotient function of n in modulus n k generation for our payload crypto system is done now we are able to encrypt and decrypt messages and here private k as lambda and we are going to use this for decryption on the other hand public k is going to be generator g modulus n and finally mu we are going to use all of these three arguments for encryption i'm going to create a function named encrypt and this is going to expect a message and random integer k as input in encryption random integer r and modulus n must be co-prime that's why i'm going to import met model here and in encryption i'm going to check met.gcd greatest common divisor r and n must be one this condition must be satisfied for each encryption if this condition is satisfied after i'm able to find the ciphertext and it's going to be g to the power of message itself for modulus n squared times random integer to the power of n in modulus n squared this multiplication must be in modulus n squared as well now i'm able to return the ciphertext then i'm going to design the decrypt function and this is going to expect just ciphertext as you can see this doesn't expect random integer i'm going to find ciphertext to the power of lambda it was my private key and i'm going to use this for decryption and modulus and square then i'm going to find the function l for the output of this expression and finally times mu this is going to be my plain text and i'm going to find this in modulus and instead of n squared 
notice that I'm just using modulus n here. In other places, I'm using modulus n square. Now let's encrypt the message and suppose that message is 1, 2, 3 and random integer is going to be, I'm going to perform random module first, random dot, print it, generate a random integer between 0 and n. Let's encrypt this message, encrypt and pass message and random integer as input and this is going to be my ciphertext. Let's see, this is my ciphertext. By the way, what was my random integer? It was 50. Then let's decrypt this message. I'm going to call decrypt function and pass ciphertext as input. By the way, I forgot to return plain text here. As you can see, this returns our plain text 1, 2, 3. If we assign this line to plain text p, thereafter, message must be equal to plain text always according to the payload decryption proof. Now let's focus on the payload decryption, how it's working. To prove payload decryption, let's remember what we have. We firstly have generator G and we set it to one plus N. Secondly, we set lambda to quotient function of n. Remember that quotient function counts the positive integer numbers from 2 to n that co prime to n. Thirdly, we have mu and we set it to multiplicative inverse of quotient function n for modulus n. And finally, we have function l. For input u, its output is u minus 1 over n. Once we have those variables, we are going to apply those operations for encryption and decryption. To encrypt the text, I'm going to find the generator g to the power of message n. Here, message is the number I would like to encrypt times random integer to the power of n in modulus n square. On the other hand, to restore plain text from ciphertext, I'm going to calculate this value c to the power of lambda in modulus n square. I'm going to find the function l from this input times mu. In ciphertext calculation, I'm going to replace the generator g to the value 1 plus n and it becomes 1 plus n to the power of message itself times random integer to the power of n in modulus n square. Thereafter, message restoration requires to find the c to the power of lambda. Let's find c to the power of lambda in this expression. This becomes the expression to the power of lambda and I'm able to move the power lambda inside the parenthesis and it becomes 1 plus n to the power of message times lambda times random integer to the power of n times lambda in modulus n square. At this point, Euler's quotient function states that quotient function of n square is equal to n times quotient function of n. Please notice the expression with random integer here. Random integer to the power of n times lambda and we set lambda to quotient function n then we can represent this expression as random integer to the power of n times quotient function of n in modulus n square here i'm able to replace the n times quotient n to quotient n square thereafter random integer to the power of quotient function of n squared in modulus n square this is the Fermat Euler's theorem and remember that a to the power of quotient function of n in modulus n is equal to 1. That's why this expression has to be equal to 1. In other words, I can simplify the term with base random integer here and c to the power of lambda is equal to 1 plus n to the power of message times lambda in modulus n square. Now I'm going to expand this term. 1 plus n to the power of message times lambda with binomial expansion and it becomes message times lambda choose 0 times n to the power of 0 plus message times lambda choose 1 times n to the power of 1 plus message times lambda choose 2 times n to the power of 2 and thereafter I'm going to have values 
for higher powers of n squared here that's why i put here three dots in this expression items including n squared and its higher powers can be divisible by n squared so all these terms can be simplified and i'm going to have just these two items and message times lambda choose zero is equal to one and n to the power of zero is also one that's why i put one here and here message times lambda choose one is equal to message times lambda and n to the power of one is equal to n itself that's why i put n times n times lambda here so we want to see to the power of lambda but message restoration requires to find function l of c to the power of lambda let's pass c to the power of lambda to function l and i'm going to put the one plus n n lambda to the function l and function l is defined here i'm going to decrease it to value one and divide it to n here plus one and minus one can be simplified and also n in the dividend and division can be simplified and the final form of this expression is going to be message times lambda now i want the function l expression in the message restoration but i'm going to also multiply this value to mu and message times lambda times mu remember lambda was total function of n and mu was its multiplicative inverse in mod n so multiplication of lambda and mu is going to be one in mod n that's why message restoration is going to be message itself and here it's defined as message as well that's why this proves the correctness of the paler crypto stamps decryption in this block we perform encryption and decryption now let's focus on its homomorphic features with respect to the addition let's encrypt a message pair and my first message is going to be one two three again and my second message is going to be 37 i'm going to generate a random number for message one and message two with r1 and r2 thereafter i'm going to encrypt those messages with encrypt message one with random integer r1 similarly i'm going to encrypt message two with random integer r2 if we multiply the ciphertext 1 and ciphertext 2 in modulus n square i'm going to have this value similarly let's encrypt message 1 plus message 2 for the random integer r1 times r2 i'm going to have the same value as you can see so we can generalize this as this condition must be satisfied always because paler crypto system is homomorphic with respect to the addition paler crypto system is homomorphic with respect to the addition and let's remember the encryption procedure for message n and random integer r i'm going to find the generator g to the power of message times random integer to the power of n in modulus n squared let's encrypt message one and message two pair according to this rule and i'm going to use the random number r1 and random number r2 encryption of message one is going to be g to the power of message one times random integer one to the power of n in modulus n square and encryption of message two is going to be generator g to the power of message two times random integer r2 to the power of n in modulus n square if i multiply encrypted values of message one and message two i'm going to multiply the expressions in the right hand side and it's going to be generator g to the power of message one times generator g to the power of message two times random integer one to the power of n times random integer two to the power of n in modulus n squared here we have common basis in g so we can represent this expression as g to the power of message one plus message two and here the exponents are common so i can represent this expression as random integer one times random integer two to 
the paragraph and on the other hand if i find the addition of message one and message two and encrypt this with random integer r1 times r2 i'm going to have the same value so this shows the correctness of the homomorphic feature of payload crypto system with respect to the addition important feature of homomorphic payload crypto system it has a neutral element similar to addition let's focus on this as you can guess zero is the natural element in addition what if i encrypt the zero message this throws an exception because the generated random integer is not called prime to n let's rerun this block as you can see c1 and c2 pair are these values and this is the encrypt value of our natural element here i'm going to use this formula to re-encrypt the message and name it ciphertext one re-encrypt and let's see what this ciphertext one re-encrypted as you can see it's different than the ciphertext one so we can say that ciphertext one re-encrypted must not be equal to ciphertext one but interestingly if i decrypt the ciphertext one re-encrypted i'm going to have one two three and if i decrypt the ciphertext one i'm going to have one two three again so we can generalize this decryption of this re-encrypted value must be equal to decryption of ciphertext one Let's see ciphertext one re-encrypt again to sum up we can regenerate the ciphertext without changing the plain text this is commonly used in e-voiting applications finally let's focus on homomorphic multiplication what paler crypto system to show this feature let's use different message pair i'm going to use 25 for the second message thereafter i'm going to encrypt this message pair and again this encryption throws an exception because generated random integer is not called prime to n that's why i'm going to regenerate this block now i'm going to find the ciphertext one to the power of message two in modulus n square i expect that this result must be equal to the encryption of message one times message two with the random integer random integer one to the power of message two in modulus n squared as you can see they both generate the same result we can generalize this multiplicative homomorphic feature of paler crypto system like that similarly this rule can be modified as ciphertext 2 to the power of message 1 in modulus n squared must be equal to the encryption of message 1 times message 2 whereas random integer is going to be random integer 2 to the power of message 1 in modulus n squared or we can get rid of the random integer here i'm going to decrypt the value on the left hand side and this must be equal to the message 1 times message 2 modulus n similarly let's apply this for the second term as you can see all these rules are satisfied because paler crypto system is homomorphic with respect to the multiplication but here please notice that base is encrypted but exponent is plain that's why we cannot call paler crypto system fully homomorphic even though it has both additive and multiplicative homomorphic features payload crypto system has also multiplicative homomorphic feature as well let's remember the encryption procedure of the crypto system we are going to find the generator g to the power of message times random integer to the power of n in modules n square for message and random integer r if i encrypt the message one with random integer r1 i'm going to have this ciphertext generator g to the power of message one times random integer r1 to the power of n in modulus n square here if i find the encrypted message one to the power of message two here please notice that uh, this value is encrypted encrypted message one but message two is not encrypted that's plain if i find this value i'm going to apply the power on the right hand side so this becomes generator g to the power of message one times message two times random integer one to the power of n times message two on the other hand if i multiply the message one and message two first and encrypt this with random integer r1 to the power of message two i'm going to have the same value this shows the correctness of the multiplicative homomorphic feature
in other words paleo crypto system is homomorphic with respect to the multiplication of i'm used the playing power with encrypted base so in this video we have focused on paleo crypto system its theory the math behind the crypto system and its practical application also we focused on the homomorphic features of the crypto system with respect to the addition and multiplication thank you all for watching and see you next time